This is a story of Naval Captain Hector Abdenor, based on real-life issues and on the many documents that the captain so zealously guarded. Here, you will learn about the important events of Venezuela from the moment that the Abdenor family establishes itself in this country. Also, important facts like the government program for the American continent that took place during the years of Captain Abdelnour's public action and, of course, his life, work, and themes associated with his career. The couple, composed of Raimundo Musa and Ventura Gibrin, formed part of the immigration group that came to Venezuela at the end of the 19th century. They settled in and dedicated themselves to farming cocoa. At this time, Venezuelan cocoa was one of the crops that sustained the national economy. Due to its great quality and standard, this is true even today. It was greatly coveted in the world market, especially in the East. The port of Carupano acquires great importance for being a very prosperous zone, consequently having an abundance of commercial activity due to the fleet of ships that brought European merchandise and took back with them our agricultural products to the old continent. Raimundo and Ventura bore seven children. Later, Carmen Musa Gibrin wed Juan Abdenur, who was also Lebanese, and birthed their children, Amelia, Ilda, Venus, Olga, and Hector. The latter ones were dark skin, and Hector was the only male. They were born on December 15th in Sucre's town of Pilar. Worried about their children's education, the whole family moved to Caracas, where they enrolled the girls in San Jose de Tarbes School and Hector in La Salle Elementary School. Since he was very young, he wanted to be an air pilot. But his wishes clashed with those of his parents because, at the time, flying was reserved for adventurers and airplanes were considered high-risk artifacts. That was enough reason for his parents to prevent him from pursuing his vocation. His parents enrolled him in a naval academy so that he could follow through with his military career. He enrolled in 1939 and graduated in 1943. This same year, the year of his graduation, coincided with a very important period in Venezuela because it joined in a national and international political context when the hydrocarbons law was approved. This year and this occurrence placed Venezuela as the third largest producer of crude oil in the world and the top exporter at that time from 1939 to 1945. This gave Venezuela a power of negotiation it had never had, but it also gave it administrative problems because the rest of the production sectors of the country were excluded. In 1945, after a sabbatical year, Hector decides to incorporate himself in his career, and this coincides with the overthrowing of General Isaias Medina on October 18, 1945. This same day, a civic military rebellion is produced and is led by Romulo Betancourt and Marcos Pérez Jiménez. From this event, a coup surges against the current president, Isaías Medina Angarita, military president who had governed Venezuela since 1941. Medina was the victim of an uprising against a government system that he inherited, democratized, and modernized. He was apprehended and expelled from the country. Hector began his professional life as a Venezuelan naval officer. In 1946, he begins an active life in the professional field, assuming posts of hierarchy that were assigned in a progressive manner, which earned him promotions, various acknowledgments abroad, and endless activities that distinguished him in his career. The captain carried out specialization courses at the Army base in Southern Boston. This was a 58-acre appendix of the United States Army located in South Boston. It was used as a loading port for Boston during World War II, and it operated from 1920 to 1974. The captain is then sent to Naval Air Station Key West, a leading training facility. 
The Key West Station is a naval area and military airport located at Boca Chica Key, four miles east of Key West's Central Business District in Florida in the United States. In 1956, Captain Abdel Nura was commissioned to realize a staff course at the Royal Naval College Greenwich in England, which was a training establishment for the Royal Navy between 1873 to 1998, providing courses for naval officers. It was the home of the Royal Navy Staff College, which provided advanced training for officers. Captain Abdul Noor held the post of deputy commander and commander several times. In 1961, he was assigned by squadron commander Sosa Rios to coordinate the activities of the Naval Army's Unitas II. These Naval Armies were conducted annually by the United States Army in cooperation with the Latin American Armies and are carried out by the Rio Treaty, T-I-A-R for its Spanish initials. Captain Abdelnour was Chief of Operations and Interim Squadron Commander. Due to his keen sense of responsibility, values instilled at home, and his hierarchy posts that were assigned in a progressive manner, which earned him several acknowledgments abroad and endless activities that distinguished him in his career, in 1964, he was commissioned by the President of Venezuela, Romulo Betancourt, to represent Venezuela as a member of the General Staff in the joint working sessions with the Venezuelan Army and the Military Department of State of the United States. However, more important than his extensive and brilliant military resume are the details that are not mentioned but complement Captain Abdel Noor's personality profile as a benefactor for Criollitos Venezuela La Salle Foundation. He also contributed to equip the Central University of Venezuela. And although the majority of his services were done from aboard different ships, Hector didn't neglect his humanistic labor. He worked it out so that he could continue taking his college courses in psychology and geography. He showed great interest in both fields, which defined him as an educated man with an immense desire to keep preparing himself intellectually and personally. He became a more complete man within his family life and job performance. Hector Abdel Noor's decision of having a military life was in part to follow the wise advice his parents had given him. But this decision would also make a huge difference in his life and would definitely leave a mark in the political and military life of the beautiful Venezuela.